Hey, what's up? It's Saint. Uh, check this out. Here's a little glitch that uh, doesn't do anything, but it's funny. Um, I invaded this guy. He's hanging out in the rise, uh, trying to, you know, just do whatever the hell they do. Um, so me and this blue decided, like, hey, well, we'll still have fun. So we had a little fist fight on top of the mountain here, and um, I'm trying to kick this dude off, right? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it, okay? But uh, there's a little glitch where if you do a repost, if you parry somebody or guard break somebody and you do a repost and then you fall off the mountain, like no one takes damage for falling, the same is apparently true for uh, a kick. Yeah, if these conditions are met, look how hilarious that was, first of all. Secondly, no fall damage, and they're fine. They're alive down there. Uh, <laughs> it looks silly. Um, and I don't know. Maybe some people can find a way to make use of that to kill AFK campers, maybe. I don't know. Um, anyway, the purpose of today's video uh, was to talk about um, the Dark Souls 2 uh, Scholar servers for PC. They're back online now. Um, but they took down the Dark Souls Prepare to Die edition PC servers. And uh, a lot of you probably maybe never played Dark Souls 1 um, or maybe never played Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition and uh, maybe don't even know what it is. So a long time ago, this studio from Software, they made a game called Demon Souls for the PlayStation 3. PlayStation was not really feeling the game and so they released it in Japan and then that was it. That's all they wanted to do. Uh, but there were enough people who were invested in the game, Demon Souls, that Bandai Namco and uh, Atlas got together and said, okay, well, we'll release it in Europe and in the United States, respectively. And they did, and uh, the game sold way more copies than anybody had anticipated it would sell. So Bandai Namco afterwards says, hey, why don't you make a game for PlayStation and Xbox, uh, you know, and so From Software made Dark Souls. And the PC players, they wanted to play the game. From Software, they get a lot of, sh they get a lot of stuff. They get a lot of crap for making a bad port of Dark Souls 1, but I think it's only fair to remember that up until this point, they didn't make PC games. But they made Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition, and despite From Software, you know, never really uh, making PC games, it's also fair to say that that port sucked ass. It was awful. Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition. It was, it was terrible. Um, but as it is with PC games, um, the players made mods and fixed the entire thing, and uh, they made Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition playable, and, uh, you know, some would even argue, like, the de facto experience of what Dark Souls should be like, because keep in mind, this was on PC back in Dark Souls 1, no, there was no console running it at 60 FPS, uh, but PC with mods could run it at 60 FPS. There was no... It was very hard to play online. It was very hard to invade people. It was very hard to summon people uh, back in the day with Dark Souls on console. But with PC, with mods, they made it easier to connect to people. Made it easier to detect cheaters so that you could, you know, whatever. Uh, and it's just overall responsible for, like, I think, the boom in Souls content on YouTube. That's the whole reason I do this. That's the whole reason I got into it, was because I was watching Oro and Eve and Martyrs and only Afro uh, way back in the day. And I say this, like these, these videos are old, sure, but like these people that made them are like, <laughs> not old. But, you know, it was, it was back in the day. But that's what got me into, you know, Souls PvP. That's what made me decide to finally try it out was prepare, watching people play Prepare to Die Edition. Okay, now, having said that, this invasion right here, it rules and it's great, and I would like to take this time. Uh, when I was watching Prepare to Die Edition stuff, you know, these dudes that were doing it, it seemed like they knew everything, it seemed like they knew every trick in the book, it seemed like, you know, they were going up against the meanest opponents, and, you know, yada yada, right? And it, it was a little daunting to think about doing PvP. And the first time I invaded, it was like I got butterflies in my stomach. I invaded in the, the, the Tomb of the Giants. And I, it just felt like I was doing something I shouldn't be doing, you know? And uh, the reason I'm telling you this is as you watch this invasion where I'm gonna just wipe the floor with like 15 dudes. <laughs> 
This is a great invasion. But I want to I want to say this. If if I see all the time, I see all the time on the internet people talking about PvP builds, people talking about invasions, whatever, and somebody who is like, yeah, um, I've, I've always kind of wanted to get into it, but I'm afraid that my build sucks. Uh, or, you know, I don't know how to play, I don't know what to do. Um, and I would just like to urge those players to just try it, just do it. It's, it, there's nothing like it. And if you play this game and you love this game, it's just more of this game that you get to play. There's there's a whole other, like, you know, there's like, in old school video games, they had like the A scenario and the B scenario. It's like a whole other scenario to, to play the game, to make builds thinking about invasions. And you don't have to know all this stupid stuff about hit stun and weapon infusions and all this. You don't have to know all this stuff. This is stuff that you can, like, figure out later. But, like, in terms of, like, hyper armor on heavy attacks, you don't have to know about that. You'll figure it out as you go. You'll watch videos. They'll make it make sense. You know, once you have the context, it, it, you'll understand better. But it doesn't, none of that matters. All that matters is that you just try this out, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Like, it's, there's nothing like this. There's nothing like invasions. And, um... Yeah, so with Prepared to Die Edition going down, it just made me think about, like, the me when I would, how I got into PvP and how much Prepared, how much Prepared to Die Edition uh, played a part in that. And so, uh, yeah, just if there's anybody watching and you're like, you've always thought about invading, but you, you know, you're worried about, do not worry about anything. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing to worry about. Just go have fun. Um, yeah. And uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, rest in peace to prepare... I keep feeling like I'm not saying that word right. Rest in peace to prepare to die edition. And uh, welcome back, Dark Souls 2 Scholar the First Sin. Okay, and before this video ends, I just want to clear something up. I, I made a video. It's called Just a Silly Little Thing I Noticed. And all the comments on it were fine. The video was about how invaders view hosts who run away and how hosts view invaders that run away. And um, it was never my intention to make like a sort of like, uh, you know, who's right and who's wrong to run away. And I, that's very clear in the video. And the comments, to be fair, even the comments in the video were like mostly well articulated and everything. But I just want to point out that like I'm not interested in like who's right or who's wrong. It doesn't matter. My point was that that's how both sides view it. It's fine when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. Fuck them. That. You know, like, from a meta standpoint, looking from the game from outside, that kind of, that's what fuels the PvP sometimes, is how hosts hate invaders, invaders hate hosts, but that they're supposed to hate each other in the game, and so, like, we hate each other, you know what I'm saying? You don't really hate them, but you get what I'm saying. Like... That feeds into it. That feeds into the PvP. It's hilarious. It's great. Good job from software. Rest in peace. Prepare to die edition. Later, y'all.